What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Got an exciting video for you all today. I'm going to be counting down the top 10 cards from the largest set in the history of the Pokemon trading card game. That's Lost Thunder, due out November 2nd. It's got 214 cards plus secret rares. Going to be an insane set. It's going to totally upheave the meta game. And pre-releases are taking place from October 20th to October 28th. It's got a lot of great cards in it. I'm really excited about it. A bunch of brand new archetypes coming out the woodwork because of this set. So let's get right down to number 10. Coming in hot at the number 10 spot is Megcargo GX. Megcargo GX is a 210 hit point fire type Pokemon GX with an ability and two attacks. The ability Crush Charge reads once during your turn before you attack, you may discard the top card from your deck. If that card's a basic energy card, you can attach it to one of your Pokemon. That combos excellently with the smooth over Megcargo. Obviously they both evolve from Slugma awesome, right? Then you can smooth over, put an energy card on top of your deck, and then accelerate it with Crush Charge, which is great because Lava Flow requires a lot of energy. For two fire energy and a colorless, Lava Flow does 50 plus damage. You could discard any number of basic energy cards from this Pokemon. This attack does 50 more damage for each card you discarded in this way. So if you discard all three energies attached to my cargo with Lava Flow, you're doing 50 plus 150 damage. You're going to do 200 damage for just three energy, which choice band you can do 230 and then if you have four energy 250 five energy 300 damage so on and so forth infinite damage ceiling awesome stuff combos great with the other meg cargo just a great combo in the mix and a cool addition to the standard pokemon trading card game my cargo gx also has a gx attack magma burn gx discard the top five cards from your opponent's deck that could be a huge assault on your opponent's resources late game if they just have one energy left that they need in order to attack Magma Burn GX has a possibility to disrupt that. So awesome stuff. Now my major gripe with my Cargo GX is that you just have to set up this huge kind of machine to get everything going. You're going to need multiple my Cargo GX. You're going to need probably at least one or two smooth over my Cargos as well. We do have Ditto Prism Star to help with this combination. However, I think that you're going to find that it's kind of difficult to get all the moving pieces up and going the way you want to, which is why I have my Cargo GX at the number 10 spot. Coming in at the number nine spot is Zorora GX. This card has a ton of hype surrounding it. People have been talking about this thing for months and it's finally here. Though, admittedly, I have no idea what Zorora's deal is. It's this lightning tiger cat thing. Why does it have a unicorn horn? I'm not exactly sure, but this card is pretty dope. It's got an ability and two attacks. The ability Electric Zone reads just like Darkrai EX's Dark Cloak, but for lightning Pokemon, which is incredible. Each of your Pokemon that has any lightning energy attached to it has no retreat cost. Awesome stuff, increasing the mobility of any deck that runs lightning energy. That is awesome. Then both its attacks are great as well. Uh, Plasma Fist for two lightning and a colorless does 160 damage with the drawback of Zorora not being able to attack during your next turn. No problem, however, that could easily be remedied with Guzma. And also you could retreat the Zorora out of the active with ease with that electric zone ability. Then Full Voltage GX allows you to attack five basic energy cards from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way that you like, just like Nitro Tank GX, but with a lightning requirement. So that is awesome. Uh, we got Nitro Tank GX, we've got Knuckle Impact, and we've got Dark Cloak all on one lightning type Pokemon. This thing is incredible. Combos awesomely with Rayquaza, obviously. You could just slap it in a Rayquaza deck, bring a bunch of lightning energy back from the discard pile with ease. Also just gives your Rayquazas free retreat if they have lightning energy attached to them as well. Or your Vika Volts, right? Those things are hefty and get stuck in the active all the time. I fully expect Zorora GX to find its way into a number of decks in standard format. Not to mention, with the new item Electric Power coming out, you can boost the damage output of your Zorora GX's Plasma Fist to new heights. Does 160 base damage with Choice Band, that's 190. Electric Power increases the damage of your Lightning type Pokemon's attacks by 30 during the turn it was played, meaning you could easily hit 220 or even 250 and higher damage with your Zorora GX with that Plasma Fist attack. So awesome stuff here. Zorora GX is sure to be a staple in some decks in standard format. Awesome card all around. 
At the number eight spot, we've got Professor Elm's Lecture. This is an awesome supporter card. Obviously, players have been missing Bridget in standard format, found other ways to build decks. We've got Nest Ball, we've got Lily. People are even using Pokemon Fan Club, but nothing quite replaced. Bridget's search your deck for three Pokemon and put them onto your bench. However, Professor Elm's Lecture is awesome. It's not a Bridget replacement, still a very good supporter card. Search your deck for up to three Pokemon with 60 hit points or less reveal them and put them into your hand then shuffle your deck what i love about professor alms lecture is that it puts the cards into your hand and you can search out evolution cards if you want to if they have 60 hit points or less this will pair amazingly with the new lost march deck both hop ip and skip loom both have 60 hit points or less which means that you can get your hop ips and your skip looms all with one supporter card there are a bunch of set up decks that have have basic Pokemon with 60 hit points or less and I love that we now have an option to go get three with a supporter card so that is great and I think a lot of setup decks will really enjoy Professor Elm's lecture as a setup card I think this card will definitely find its way into some decks and will be a staple in the upcoming Lost March archetype Number seven, we've got Netball. Netball is an item card that says search your deck for a basic grass Pokemon or a grass energy, reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. If there's anything we've learned so far in this standard format, it's that free search is incredible. Great Ball has been finding its way into some decks. We've got Nest Ball appearing in just almost every single deck. Mysterious Treasure is incredible, though it does have a cost. It's a minimal cost. Free search is great. Netball is going to be a staple in any decks playing grass type Pokemon. And I love the versatility of this card. The ability to search out grass Pokemon or grass energy just increases the consistency of your deck. Having the out to search for grass energy is even better in a deck like Lost March, which only plays a few grass energy to begin with. So you could search out your Hopips or your Skip Looms with Netball or your grass energy, just making this an amazing card in the upcoming Lost March archetype. I think that Netball will find its way into quite a few decks that play grass, although it's not the most versatile card in the world because it is limited to grass decks, it will be an incredible card for grass decks. At the number six spot, we've got Naganadel. It's a stage one psychic type Pokemon with 130 hit points. It's got an ability and an attack. The ability charge up reads once during a turn before you attack, you may attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to this Pokemon. Then the attack for three colorless energy, turning point, 80 damage. And if you have exactly three prize cards remaining, it does 80 more damage. Now this may sound a little underwhelming, but honestly the card is best as a support Pokemon. Pokemon. It can accelerate any type of energy you want into play. And if you have multiple Naganadel in play, that means you can accelerate multiple energy into play per turn. Obviously, psychic types have Malamar, can accelerate energy into play with Malamar to anybody, which is better. But Naganadel is the universal energy accelerator and even attacks for all colorless energy, meaning that it can accelerate any type of energy into play and can attack using any type of energy as well, which is awesome for certain decks. Fire types are going to love this with the new Blacephalon GX, and then also could use it in a deck like Raichu GX, right? Which just does more damage for the amount of lightning type energy you have in play. You also could combo it with Rayquaza GX, right? Just accelerating energy from the discard pile into play every turn with energy switch, stuff like that. It's just a universal energy accelerator. And then a psychic type Pokemon attacking is awesome as well because it could trade with Buzzwall, it could trade with Garbodor, it could trade with Deoxys in those Malamar decks. This card can trade with all those annoying threats, which are a pain for big Pokemon GX to deal with, right? So I love the universal nature of this card. I love that it can just be splashed into any type of deck that wants to just load energy up into play. Uh, it's an awesome card. I think it'll see a lot of play. Also combos with Beast Ring, right? You could accelerate more energy into play using Beast Ring when your opponent is on that four and three prize card turn. Awesome card, universal. This thing is going to be good. 
And number five, we've got Blacephalon GX, or as I prefer to call him, Cake Pop GX. For one fire energy, bursting burner, your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned and confused. An easy to execute one fire energy attack awesome for the first turn of the game or just anytime you want to disrupt your opponent then for two fire energies we've got mind blown does 50 damage times the amount of fire energy you would like to send to the lost zone this turn so you can send any number of fire energy you have in play to the lost zone obviously there's no way to get that energy back from the lost zone but you're sending it away you're doing 50 damage times the amount of energy you send in that way which could easily ramp up to 200 250 damage you play a lot of energy with this thing you get it into play with the previously mentioned naganadel that is awesome right you can uh even beast ring energy into play this is an Ultra Beast. Naganadel's an Ultra Beast. Awesome stuff. And then an amazing GX attack as well. Burst GX. Discard one of your prize cards. If that card is an energy card, attach it to one of your Pokemon. So obviously you get to just take a prize. It's like Blade GX, but better, right? Just you get discard your prize card. I mean, what's not to like about that? You can even accelerate the energy if it is an energy. This card, simply put, will be an archetype in standard format. It's awesome. There's no way this thing isn't good. There are just tons of ways to accelerate fire energy into play. You got Turtonator GX, can Nitro Tank, got uh, Beast Ring, obviously, which is just generally an energy accelerator, all Ultra Beast Pokemon. We've got the Naganadel, which I've already mentioned as well, which can accelerate that fire energy this deck just should be pretty sweet pretty much makes itself awesome awesome stuff does infinite amounts of damage with that mind blown attack and then you can even trade with the annoying non gx pokemon as well if you pair this thing with naganadel i think this card's awesome albeit a little goofy looking Coming in at the four spot is Zeb Strika. This card is incredible. Everybody missed Octillery so much when that Abyssal Handing Octopus rotated out of standard four bat. Now we've got Zeb Strika, which is pretty comparable to be honest. It's a stage one Pokemon with 110 hit points, lightning type, its ability fast break reads once during your turn before you attack you may discard your hand then draw four cards so even though you're drawing less cards than you did with abyssal hand you do get to just maximize those four cards every turn by discarding your hand in order to draw four now it is a little bit more of a destructive ability right unlike abyssal hand uh, you can't just hang on to something say you need like guzma and an energy combo to win you can't just hang on to the guzma and abyssal for four right you have to discard your hand in order to draw four that being said this is an awesome addition to a lot of archetypes it's going to be very cool to see how decks incorporate zeb strika and the fast break ability in order to draw a little bit more aggressively a lot of decks in standard format have been missing that aggressive draw engine in their decks and i think zeb strika is going to be an awesome addition to the card pool in standard format Moving on to the top three, and in third place, we've got Ninetales GX. Ninetales GX is a 200 hit point stage one Pokemon GX, evolves from Alolan Vulpix. It's got an ability, Mysterious Guidance, and that is what makes this card so good. It reads, when you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during a turn, you may search your deck for up to two item cards, reveal them, and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. This is incredible. We all know Alolan Vulpix with that amazing beacon attack it's a free attack sets up so many decks and Alolan Vulpix has been played since the card was released in setup decks it is that good as a starter and now we have a natural evolution that you can search out with the Alolan Vulpix's beacon which helps set up your deck even further so decks could easily accommodate both Vulpix and Ninetales GX in their decks this is a huge boon for setup decks you can easily retreat into Alolan Vulpix use beacon for free and you can beacon for alola nine tails gx then the following turn use mysterious guidance go get things like rare candy you could go get 
things like mysterious treasure, whatever you need to continue setting up your deck. Alola Ninetales GX can get it for you. It's going to be an incredible card. Now also the, uh, the Alola Ninetales line just got even more serious. There are now three evolutions from Alola Vulpix that are all incredible. We've got the original Alola Ninetales GX with that ice blade attack and then also that incredible GX attack which heals itself. Awesome stuff, great for sniping things. We've got this new Alola Ninetales GX, the fairy type with that mysterious guidance ability. And then we've also got the non-GX Alola Ninetales with that Alolan barrier ability, which is just amazing. So we've got a lot of different versatile options stemming all from a great basic Pokemon, Alolan Vulpix. There's no way this Alolan Ninetales GX won't see play in something. I mean, you could throw this in any deck. I mean, we could even play it with Buzzwall, right? Uh, the Alola Ninetales GX can search out the likes of Beast Ring on the turns you you want it. It can search out Choice Bands. It is just that good of a card. Uh, an expanded format, you can search out Max Elixirs. You can search out anything that you need. I love the versatility of this card, and it's definitely going to see play. At number two, we've got Ditto Prism Star. I have been so stoked on this card since it was revealed. First of all, let's take a look at that artwork. Ditto is just squaring up over there in that green fiery flame. Incredible, the Ditto is awesome. He looks sweet. It's an incredible card. He's only got 40 hit points, but versatility is the name of the game. And versatility is what makes so many of the cards in this list so good. Ditto Prism Star is the ultimate versatile Pokemon. I have wished that this card existed since I've been playing the Pokemon trading card game, and here it goes. It is a Prism Star Pokemon. You can only run one Ditto Prism Star in your deck, but one is better than none. One is incredible. The ability Evolve Into Anything reads, during your turn, you may play a stage one evolution card from your hand onto this Pokemon to evolve it, excluding your first turn and the turn this Pokemon came into play. That means that Ditto is essentially just this Pokemon that can evolve into any stage one, which is incredible. It's incredible for Zorark decks. It acts as a fifth basic Pokemon in things like Malamar decks if you wanted to. In Magcargo, if you wanted to play a dedicated Magcargo deck, you could play uh, Ditto Prism Star in that as well. Any deck that wants to either run just a thick stage one line, right? If you wanted to run a five, four stage, stage one line, you could do it now thanks to Ditto Prism Star. If you wanted to run multiple stage ones in your deck, Ditto Prism Star allows you to do that. If you wanted to maybe just run a stage one line and then maybe a one, one line of something else, you don't even need to play that one basic Pokemon of whatever else you were considering running a one, one line of now. You could just play the Ditto Prism Star. Imagine something like this in a Malamar deck, you want to play Zeb Strika, but there's not a lot of room in there, right? You can run four of your NK, you can run four Malamars, you could run one Ditto Prism Star and one Zeb Strika. So now if you get yourself into the situation where you want to have the Ditto Prism Star be a Malamar, it could be a Malamar. If you want it to be a Zeb Strika, it could be a Zeb Strika. Awesome card, awesome artwork, great stuff. Number two, Ditto Prism Star. Coming in first place is every card that has to do with the new Lost March deck. That's right, Lost March is number one in Lost Thunder. This is a brand new archetype coming out of this set. I think it's going to be great. I think it's gonna see play. I think it's going to be good for sure. It's reminiscent of the Night March deck that we saw a couple years ago, except instead of doing 20 damage times the amount of Night Marches you have in the discard pile, we're doing 20 damage times the amount of non-Prism Star Pokemon in the Lost Zone. Now there's a bunch of Lost Zone support in this new set, we've got Lost Mixer, which sends two cards from your hand to the Lost Zone. Then you get to draw a card from your deck. So awesome just being able to pitch any card you want from your hand into the Lost Zone. We've also got Trumbeak with its Mountain Fairy ability that reads once during a turn before you attack. If this card's in your hand, you may place it into the Lost Zone. If you do, look at the top card of your opponent's deck, then return it to the top of your opponent's deck. If the card is a supporter card, put it in the Lost Zone instead. So a nice little hazing card allows you to peek at your opponent's top deck, maybe disrupt some of their resources, and also just pitches itself to the Lost Zone, 
which is great for this deck. Now that might not sound like a lot, but wait, there's more. We also have Skip Loom. Skip Loom, which evolves into Jump Luff, which can perform the Lost March attack, has an ability Flower Bridge. Once during a turn before you attack, you may search your deck for a Jump Luff and switch it with this Pokemon. Place this Pokemon and all cards attached to it into the Lost Zone, then shuffle your deck. So Skip Loom is awesome. Skip Loom is the reason that the Lost March deck even works. Not only do we have Lost Mixer and Trumbeak, both getting Pokemon into the Lost Zone, but we also have Skip Loom, which just as soon as it evolves from Hop Bip, can go search out a Jump Luff, slap the Jump up in play, then pitch both Skip Loom and Hop Bip into the Lost Zone. So that's going to be amazing for just getting Pokemon into the Lost Zone, getting the Jump Luff out into play early. Essentially, Jump Luff might as well be a stage one, since as soon as you evolve into Skip Loom, you could trigger that ability and go get your Jump Luff in play, which is awesome. Jump Luff performs Lost March for just one Grass Energy, and then we also have the 40 hit point Nat 2, which performs Lost March for just a double colorless energy. So we have Grass Energy, which we can search with Netball. We could get the whole Jump Luff line with Netball. We also have Nat 2, which attacks for a double colorless energy. So between Nat 2 and Jump Luff, we have eight potential Lost Marchers in the deck, which is just awesome. Plenty of opportunities to get Lost Marchers into the discard pile. We should also note there is also a Spinarak, which can send itself into the Lost Zone, has an attack which paralyzes and poisons the defending Pokemon, then pitches itself into the Lost Zone, which is pretty dope as well. So I think Lost March is going to be a great deck. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to play, if nothing else. And I think it is definitely the most substantial thing to come out of this new set. But we also got to look out for Blacephalon. I think that's going to be a great card as well. Zorora GX, a lot of super cool stuff in this set. So there were way too many cards to fit on this top 10 list. So there were like way too many cards to fit on this top 10 list. And there was a lot of cards that I just had right outside the top 10. Let me know what cards do you think are the best cards in Lost Thunder. Are you excited for this set? Are you going to be going to any of those pre-releases on October 20th or October 28th? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell. Let me know what do you guys think of Lost Thunder in the comments below. Peace.